Everywhere you look, somebody's making a new pharmacy school. Back in the early 2000s, you might have had 70 to 80 schools, and now we're up to like 138. This huge explosive growth in the number of pharmacy schools will absolutely have a huge impact on the future of the pharmacy profession. We just don't exactly know what it is yet. Here's some thoughts, though. The growth of easy credit because of the Grad Plus program in 2006 allowed pharmacy schools to charge anything they want for tuition. It also makes it so that all you have to do is just get approval to open a school and the government will give you guaranteed loans for whatever your cost of attendance ends up being. So there's no cap on the amount of money that it takes uh, to become a pharmacist anymore. You can borrow as much as you want and the schools are realizing that. The other challenge that pharmacists are facing is we'll probably see pharmacists and nurse practitioners go head to head in increasing years. On top of that, You'll have issues in the profession from automation and self-service kiosks, perhaps, and Amazon buying PillPack, trying to get into that space and disrupt the traditional model of CVS and Walgreens, and also having virtual video conferencing technology that could allow cheaper sources of pharmacists to give you advice about medications or something like that. Obviously, I'm not a PharmD. I'm not an expert in the industry and what's happening, but I do know quite a bit about what's going on in terms of the financing of the degree and the education because we've made plans for hundreds of borrowers, actually over a thousand now, uh, for six-figure student loan debt and getting people a specific plan for their individual circumstances. If you're applying to pharmacy school right now, you should know that the initial demand for pharmacists that everyone was predicting from the federal government is being met and then some. We're seeing, in some cases, salary decreases, a little bit of concern around layoffs or people not being able to get full-time status. And even though the overall economy is very hot right now, the pharmacy job market is not nearly as hot. So imagine what will happen in a downturn with the continued production of so many graduates that we have with all of these pharmacy schools. It's definitely cause for concern. If you're applying to pharmacy school in any kind of upcoming cycle, I would strongly suggest that you do not do any early application decisions. I would also suggest that you don't sign up for any kind of accelerated programs where you decide at 18 that you're gonna be a pharmacist. The schools right now should be offering way more discounts and decreasing their prices to attract students, but instead they're coming up with collusive ways to work together to try to keep the price of the PharmD degree artificially high. Know that if you're going for a PharmD now, that you should be able to negotiate heavily to get discounts for the degree and go to the lowest cost school that you possibly can. If you already have six figures of pharmacy student loan debt, we're experts in figuring that out. You're probably making mistakes if you know all of the rules about student loans that you might not even realize. For example, getting an interest rate subsidy on the revised pay-as-you-earn program if you're in a PGY-1 or PGY-2 year, if you need to be refinancing but you haven't yet, maybe you're on a graduated or an extended repayment program when you should be on something like revised pay-as-you-earn or pay-as-you-earn, and maybe you should even be going for the public service loan forgiveness program but you haven't realized it yet. So this explosive growth in pharmacy schools is going to create explosive growth in pharmacy student loan debt. We'd be happy to help if that's you, if you're in that situation. Just visit studentloanplanner.com and check out all the articles we've written about pharmacy and student loan debt and the future of the profession. Thanks for watching.